Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unplugged Urban. Today we are at Gresham High School. Uh, kids are running around. Ben's taking Lucky for a walk. Uh, Annie was playing tennis in that last scene. Kind of playing tennis. Yeah, she's more of a racquetball player. She keeps trying <laughs> to spike the ball and uh, doesn't work so good. No. She hits the ball really hard too, which is not the best for tennis. And hopefully the sound's not too bad. Somebody's out mowing the yard too, so. Well, they're vacuuming the turf. Or vacuuming the turf. Yeah. Getting ready for high school football. Yeah, yeah. So summer's summer's kind of ripping by. But, yeah. uh, so this week we're following up with uh, our uh, part two of Solar Garage. And uh, we're wiring up the garage. Uh, we, we actually did that yesterday, but we wanted to kind of film our intro after the fact. So we kind of talk about like what we learned. Um, I've wired, this is the second system. Well, I guess third, because I've wired the garage twice now. Right. Twice on the garage. So I'm pretty familiar with um, all the different elements of solar, um, batteries, charging, and off-grid. Uh, but Danielle wanted to really learn a lot more because uh, when she's at home and I'm not there and the solar system does something weird, she's like, what do I, what do, I do? Yeah. So the first thing we did was we sat down at the kitchen table and I just kind of laid out a couple of ideas. Um, hopefully they're helpful to you. Were they helpful? They helped me see the the progression in which it comes in and is converted. Yeah, yeah, and the difference between, you know, battery charge and voltage, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So here's that part. All right, so let's start with where our power comes in. For most people, your power comes in from the electrical grid. Ours in the garage, since it's totally off grid, is gonna come in only from the sun. So those mm -hmm. come from solar panels. We should make them yellow. Okay. Because that's the sun. Is that yellow? That's yellow. That's what's gold, but. <laughs> All right. So we're going to draw a box here that represents our array of solar panels. And uh, usually in a drawing, they refer to that as PV, which stands for photovoltaic. It's converting photons, which is what the sun gives you, into Voltage. volts. Voltage. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> now, the thing about photovoltaic voltage is it always comes out in direct current. So let's draw that in red. And direct current, they usually draw like this with two dashes and then a line. The type of current that your house uses is AC or alternating current. So you have DC, which is direct current, and you have AC, which is alternating current. The reason that your house uses AC is AC transmits better. So if it has to go from the power station, from the power grid to your house, you lose less voltage. And this is important to remember when you're setting up a DC off-grid system, you wanna use the shortest cables possible because the longer your cables are, the more inefficient it becomes. <laughs> um, we eventually need to get this DC into AC power. So before that can happen though, we got another thing. We've got your solar controller or what they call the MMPT. And I'll put uh, that up on the screen somewhere because I can't remember what MMPC stands for. <laughs> but it's basically uh, the control panel for your solar panels. And what its job is to do, it's, it basically runs the whole show. Mm -hmm. Because here's the problem. The sun um, is not consistent energy. So uh, it goes away at night, mm -hmm. comes back during the day. You get more power in the middle of the day. You get less power when it starts to rain or a cloud comes by. And so this will give you out all varying types of energy. And the MMPT has to somehow deal with variable energy and a consistent output. Uh, it connects to the batteries. What color should we make batteries? The batteries? Yeah. Oh no, purple. Purple for batteries. Okay. <laughs> so we got our battery here. I think I'm gonna do a battery symbol like this. Does that look like a battery? Sure. Okay. We'll do like or a hydro it's flash. 70% full. Okay. So we've got our battery here. The MMPT charges our batteries. That's mm -hmm. one thing that happens, okay? And uh, then we've got our inverter. What color should we make that one? Green. Green? The other green. The other green. When we have lots of power coming in from the sun then the MMPT is going to do two things. It's going to charge the batteries, make sure they're full, and it's gonna send electricity down to the inverter 
for anything that it needs to power in the garage or the house or wherever you have this, okay? Mm -hmm. When we don't have enough sunlight, then it stop charging the batteries and only give, or maybe charge them less and only give power to the inverter to run what we're running. And at some point, if we have no power, or very, very little power, the MMPT may just stop putting out any power to either one and the batteries are gonna feed the inverter, which will drain your batteries. Right. Like at nighttime. Right. Now the inverter, it's gonna put out AC voltage, which goes to your lights, your outlets, your tools, whatever we have in the garage. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Now that we have this all laid out, this is what we're gonna wire today. And what we first need to figure out is how we're gonna connect all eight of those cells. Mm -hmm. And you wanna make sure when you're buying your solar panels and you're buying your MMT and you're buying your inverter that they all match. You have enough wattage to carry each one of them. So we're gonna talk about how we figure that out first. Okay. So think about batteries. When you put batteries in, in a device, um, you kind of like, sometimes you put them all the same direction, sometimes you put them in different directions. Right. And that is the difference between what they call parallel and series, okay? So let's say we have two panels, one, two, okay? If we were to hook them in series, that means one after the other, um, just like a battery, they have a positive and a negative side. So what we would do to hook them in series is we'd, we'd hook the negative to the positive of one side. Right, and so on and so on. And forth. so on and so on, exactly. And right. the output would be twice the voltage, okay? So if these were 12 volt, then the output would be 24 volts. Right, that makes okay? sense. If you're talking about parallel, now if you hook them together. Literally both ends. Uh-huh. Okay. These are 12 volts. You will have an output of 12 volts, okay? The difference is they have twice the current. Okay. So what is current and voltage? Think you, about it this way. You want way. more current? Well, let's define the two first. Okay. And then I'll describe I'm it. getting ahead of you. No, Wait. you're not. This is my favorite color. Okay, here we go. So let's think about the easiest way to explain it. It doesn't really work like this, but the best analogy I've come up with is you have a dam, okay? And you have all this water sitting behind the dam. Mm -hmm. Voltage is how much water, the height of the water. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then current is the mm -hmm. force of the water. Okay. So with any dam, it's being fed by something, mm -hmm. okay? So when you open this dam up, if you were to open this door up and you let all this water come out. Right. Okay? Yeah. Assuming the levels all stayed the same, the height would be the voltage, and how fast it's moving or the amount would be the current, the right. force that's pushing it. Okay? That, that would equal your total power. Okay. This is where we get into Ohm's law. No way. Okay. So here's the, this is the punchline. Science morning. Here we go. Science breakfast. Here we go. So Ohm's law says a bunch of things, but one of the things it says is power's law. And it says that power equals voltage, or they say E for voltage. Of course. Times current, which is I. Why don't they use I know. <laughs> I know, right? Why not using V and C? Some yes. people do write V and C, but everyone writes P, I, and E. Yeah. So when you're hooking up your solar cells, you need to know the maximum voltage maximum current and the wattage. Okay. So we have 100 watt cells. Okay. Okay. So that's our 100 watts that goes right here. 100 watts and the voltage, which is E, is going to be 12 volts. Okay. With 100 watt panels mm -hmm. at 12 volts, it's going to be 100 watts equals 12 times, we just did the math up here, 8.333 whatever mm -hmm. current. Okay. So, that means that when we arrange our eight cells, we've got eight of these things, if each one of them has 12 volts, 8.3 amps, okay, we gotta figure out how to combine them all to not overcurrent or over voltage because when we put them 
in parallel, even though we have 12 volts here, mm -hmm. we've got about 16.6 amps. Is amps the same as current? Uh huh. Okay. Right. That's a measurement. Good, good question. That's a measurement of current. Okay. Right. So we got to figure out how can we make sure we don't overcurrent our MMPT. Our MMPT, what's really cool, and I'm going to show you the link right now, it has a calculator online that you can use to figure this out. But our MMPT said the best way to hook these up is in a 4x2. So it's like having two rows of batteries in series, and then the two rows, the top row of cells and the bottom row of solar cells hooked together and this will be our output right here. And so if we calculate this up, it means we've got 12, 24, 36, 48 volts. This will be a 48 volt system. Right. So 8.3 times two, we got 48 volts at 16.667 amps. Now, this is important to do this exercise. Either use the Midnight Solar online tool um, for their devices if you're gonna get one of theirs or look at your MMT when, MMPT when you order it from Amazon or wherever you're gonna get it and make sure that how are you gonna lay your solar panels up you do not exceed the voltage and you do not exceed the current. If you do that you can cause a problem. You can cause mm -hmm. a fire, you can break something. Right. Does that make sense? So far so good. Let's do it. All right. Are underneath the solar panels. Yes. <laughs> it's really meant for dogs not for people. Uh, but uh, we're going to start hooking up all the wires like we showed you in the drawing. Uh, we're going to hook, and I, I realized when I got under here, it's probably going to be better to hook instead of top row, bottom row, uh, left side, and right side. But it's going to be the same thing. We're hook four panels in series on one side, four panels in series on the other side, and then connect them together. Um, we have these guys here. You can order these on Amazon or just about anywhere it sells solar equipment. These are combiners, and uh, these solar connectors have these really cool kind of connectors that keep you from um, creating a lot of spark or getting them wet uh, when you're connecting or disconnecting them. So um, each one is labeled with a plus and minus. You can see that one says minus and this one says plus and they're also made in such a way that you can't put you know two positives together. It won't work. Um, so they are kind of foolproof in that sense but uh, we're going to hook one half together the other half together and then we're going to combine them with this. If you're running them in high wattage, like if you get over a thousand watts, you probably want to have a solar combiner box. Uh, that's where you have disconnects in the box. Um, you can shut each like section off and it also combines all of them together. I'll leave some links to those in the description below. Anyway, so let's get hooking them up. You can see here, Daniel's got one half hooked up. So we've got starting with this guy here. This is um, the negative that's gonna go to the combiner. And then out of this panel, it goes over to the next panel. From that panel, goes down. Goes to the next panel. From that panel, it goes to the next panel. So the four panels on the left side here are now all hooked together. We're gonna do the same thing on the right, and then we'll have basically just two cables to hook to the garage. So now we're left with basically, this is from this side, right? We got a positive and negative from the left side and you've got the positive and negative from the right side, right? Correct. Can you grab the joiner behind you? So you're going to, let's see, that's, that's gonna connect positive. So I'm gonna plug my positive in there. And, and you plug your plug positive in there. Positive in here. There, it is, there it is. Okay, so there's one end. And then the negative. There, all right, we're good. Okay, so now we're left with... Just a positive One and a positive, negative. one negative. This is gonna go right into our MMPT on the other side of this wall. We've, whoa. <laughs> Are you okay? You want me to hold it? No, we got it. All right, so we've cleaned off everything off the wall. All we've got left is our uh, solar panel 
cables coming in and we've labeled them plus and minus that's good there's also um, up here I mentioned that all of our lights are DC and so these are the wires that run the lights in the garage and this uh, might look familiar if you've worked on automotive um, it's basically just an automotive uh, sort of a generic fuse box fuse box yeah where we're just using automotive like blade fuses because uh, you know essentially that's what a car uses and then the other thing is you can see back here are the batteries so we got two 12 volt batteries and we run those batteries in series which means we'll have a total of how many volts Daniel? I don't remember there's two 12 volts in I don't series. have my notes oh, okay so in parallel you add current in series you add voltage so it's gonna be 24 volts I like that answer <laughs> I feel like the kid who's like, will you help me with my homework? Yes. You're really cute. And then you're like, will you just do my homework for me? <laughs> yeah. A DC side for the inverter, we'll, we'll show you that in a second. That's all 24 volt. Um, it's important to know what your battery voltage is for your inverter and for your MMPT, because you'll have to either program or set that, or some of them you can't program. They come set up as a 12 volt, 24 volt, 48, whatever. Um, so you just want to know that before you're ordering that. And um, if they're configurable, like both of ours are, then, then you want to know that when you're configuring them. Here's all the stuff that we plan on installing today. Uh, let me walk you through it real quick. We've got um, our solar, uh, nope. What is this, Danielle? It's an inverter. See, it says, says it right there. So this is our inverter. Um, it's a 3,000 watt inverter. DC to AC. See, you're getting this. <laughs> and what's this guy right here? This is the controller. Yep, that's the solar controller. There it is. That's our uh, MMPT. Now, this is kind of the big surprise I told you about last week. Um, I'm a big fan of Midnight Solar. They make the best stuff. And we found one of these on clearance. Um, got it for about half price, so super excited. But the cool thing is we're also gonna hook up one of these, and this is a uh, Whizbang Junior. Whizbang Junior, what it does on a Midnight Solar, I don't know when they came up with the name for that, but it monitors everything on your, um, on your Midnight Solar and, well actually your Midnight Solar monitors a lot of stuff, but this monitors state of charge, battery current, all that other stuff, so it can tell you like how much current you have left, what your battery charging situation is, all that stuff. Yeah, so it's this all little... on this little guy. All that little guy right there. And he hooks up to another new piece that we're going to have. And if you have a larger system, if you get into the near kilowatt range, which we're getting there because we've moved past about we're over 800 watts, um, you want a, a shunt. So what this is, is um, it's a current shunt and it acts as basically a port for your... Um, if you're gonna read your current, you're gonna need one of those shunts because this is where that goes. Also, it acts as a protection device if you have a high um, like peak load or something shorts out. This thing will break instead of your equipment breaking. So these are really important to have. And the last thing that we're gonna need, um, and this is just a, an add-on piece because of our, our internet, um, we don't have, uh, most people don't have internet going out to the garage, but this is a Wi-Fi adapter. So the midnight outputs uh, Ethernet to a network to communicate to the tablet in the kitchen what's going on. So this is the easiest way to hook it up. Um, this is a TP brand. They make lots of different brands. I bought a Netgear for the one in the basement. Um, they all seem to work pretty good. I haven't tried this one before, so we'll see how it works. But you basically just need, if you have a midnight solar, it's so worth hooking up the Ethernet. You just need to get um, a Wi-Fi range extender, something that's got a port on it you can plug into and get hooked up to the Internet. So we're going to start with installing our solar controller, get that set up, and then we'll move on from there. So uh, midnight solar, we got to first take the case off. we got the screws out. Be very careful to remove the... Uh, display port uh, now inside here we got a couple of things one uh, this is a battery temperature sensor um, that's one really nice feature on the midnight solar is that uh, uh, it'll measure the temp of your batteries when it's charging and make sure they don't overheat um, so we're going to put that on our batteries basically there's just uh, a little sticker on this uh, thermocoupler and uh, we'll put that we'll put that on the batteries in a little bit they also give you lots of warning stickers about how <laughs> deadly electricity is that's my favorite <laughs> yes all right uh, and so now um, we can see there's a couple mounting holes we got one there one there 
And there's, and there's one, one at the top. way at the top. So that's how we're going to bolt this on the wall. So let's get that set. What are those knockout things here? Oh, yeah. So if you're going to hook this into an electrical grid, they give you some one inch um, that are already open, but they also give you some three quarter. And so you can pop those out if you need to go into a three quarter. They give you quite a different sizes. This, this platform is just really flexible. So I've got uh, Midnight Solar hooked up to cells outside. And now we need to get the battery side of things going so we can turn it on and program and all that kind of stuff. So I put my shunt here that we're gonna put uh, negative side of our batteries through. Again, this is our safety protection. It also gives us the ability to hook up that Whizbang Junior to give us all the stats and information on, uh, on what the system's doing. I'm gonna use this block here as my positive rail um, and we'll get the battery going and then we'll get the inverter. So we got a little bit of wiring to do. So um, we got the midnight solar configured for the batteries. It's really happy right now. You can see right now we got about 75 volts coming in, which is about right for those panels under load. Um, it's pulling down 150 watts. Uh, and the reason it's only pulling down that much, that's all we're using. It's so the only thing that's happening right now is recharging batteries. We don't have any lights on, we don't have anything else going. Um, so this is all looking good. We got our uh, solar cells, MMPT and the batteries. The next thing to do is you want to hook up that Whizbang Junior to the shunt here so it can measure uh, state of charge and a few other things. And then we also want to get our Ethernet cable coming out of here um, to our Wi Fi connection. And then we can close this up. We'll be all done with the Midnight Solar and then we move on to other stuff. So we took a little break and uh, I'm back. Danielle is actually taking a nap. She wasn't feeling too good. We got some more cable, so we can got plenty enough to wire up our inverter. So I'm gonna get that going and we'll finish this build up. So this is going to give us holy, hopefully, AC power. Here AC power to the rescue. What? Nothing blew up. Why would it blow up? We don't need a fire extinguisher or Look anything. 24.7 volts and 121. So you just heard Danielle say, should I grab the fire extinguisher? And you're thinking that might be overreacting, but... No. Nope. In some ways it's not. The first time... <laughs> Do you want to start? You go ahead. I'll start. Okay. You get out in. So the first time I installed the solar system, um, there's just so many parts. And we, I, I, one bit of advice, um, if you're going to put a solar system in, start simple. And uh, that was, I think that was the biggest mistake I made was we went all out. The The house system we have now was our first one. And it it is as it was when we installed it. So we like, I did all the research and I like, oh, we should get this and we should buy that charger and buy this inverter and have this, uh, you know, connection and then we run off the panel. I mean, I spent probably a month like putting all that together, at right. least in my head and on paper. And then actually getting to do it was kind of overwhelming. And I missed one really, really big piece. For some reason, I just hooked all the panels in par and no, not parallel, in series. Mm -hmm. And so we had a ridiculous amount of voltage coming out of that thing. I think we were somewhere around 300 volts. And uh, fortunately, the breaker did its job of shutting the power off. However, and this is not uncommon, the breaker caught on fire and it kept 
on fire. Like Pepper it would not. Me. Yeah, and so yes. I'm I'm in the basement. You're up in the kitchen. And yes, what, and, and you. I'll, all I hear is fire. You're yelling fire extinguisher, and I couldn't quite understand what you're saying. And at the same time, why would he be asking for a fire, fire extinguisher? extinguisher? So I bring it down, and sure enough, there's fi smoke pouring out of the box that he has closed trying to get it because it should just put itself out right right well it wasn't putting itself out so thank goodness we had the right kind of fire extinguisher for an electrical fire and um, put it out pretty quickly and then of course had the baking soda stuff everywhere everywhere well, the, the crazy the part is the fire extinguisher was putting it out but then it would start again yes because there was still current and so what i had to do was while she was hitting it with the fire extinguisher i had to hold the wire that was carrying all this voltage getting with a screwdriver and and un take and the, take the wire, wire out. out like literally get it out of the box so, so i'm a little leery parking. sometimes of not that I don't trust you, but, but we, I don't trust electricity. <laughs> we didn't have, well, you shouldn't trust me because I made that mistake, but we didn't have that this time. No. And it, the, you know, the thing is, is that uh, obviously fire safety is a big deal. The, 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 the big thing here is, you know, uh, make sure to follow all the rules. Like the good thing is we had it in a box. It was in a metal box, so it wasn't gonna catch the house on fire. The worst thing it would have done was made a lot of smoke and melted the, all the, the breaker. Yeah, all the components inside. And the plus too is you have a lot of electrical wiring experience you're not a novice at this at all sure you're you're not an electrician per se but you have a lot of experience with it so that's a piece too if you're a total novice you got to do a lot of yeah. homework yeah and it, and it also um it's just a good reminder too like it never hurts to hire an electrician and there's lots of electricians mm -hmm. who like if you want to learn how to put something together they'll be happy to tell you what they're doing and have you follow along yeah um you know you just got to make sure to verify with your city and state that you're following all the code and that you can't actually install it yourself or do you actually have to have somebody else install it most off-grid systems do not require that because they're not connecting to an electrical grid but again it depends on your city and state and you want to verify all that so yep. anyway we just want to explain the comment about fire extinguisher back to the bills <laughs> So we've got everything wired up and uh, buttoned up pretty good. It looks a lot cleaner than it did before. Um, we've got all of our batteries charging and I've got the ethernet connection uh, working here. Uh, well, it's plugged in, I need to make it work. So that's my next step is to uh, get that connected to our Wi-Fi and then get the Midnight Solar app uh, set up uh, with the garage. So I'm in the kitchen now looking at the uh, Midnight Classic app we've got on the tablet here. You can see we're looking at the house's system, 52.7. Uh, no solar power because the sun's gone down for a day. But if I click up here, nice. we got one, two classics. There's the house. There's the garage. 25.3 volts. Got a good charge today. Again, no, no solar energy coming in. I would call this project done. You know, one thing I gotta say is uh, you take for granted not having electricity for a week. Like, we were without electricity for a week just in the garage. Just in the garage. Yeah, just yeah. in the garage. I mean, it would have been terrible in the house, but yeah. just in the garage. And we found out this week um, they're actually shutting our electricity off. The city of Portland is shutting our electricity off. For, um, for a day, for a day, to do some work on somewhere, and it was kind of nice. But like, oh, oh, but we'll still have power. Who cares? Because <laughs> we make our own. Yeah. But it was great to have electricity back. Uh, it was nice to get in the garage this morning, and uh, I built a birdhouse for a friend who's it's their birthday, and she wanted a birdhouse. And uh, it was just nice to get a project done okay. and have all the tools and have everything ready to go. Uh, so and hope... the, the garage cleaned up now too. And yes, Danielle is the best. Because while I'm doing all this, I mean, she's doing a lot of the filming, but at the same time, I my have to messy, organize everything. My messy desk is driving her nuts. It drives me crazy. So she's over there cleaning. That's why it. I try not to go in the garage unless I have to, because it bothers me. I'll try to work on that. Yeah. I'll get better, I promise. <laughs> 23 years 23 later. 23 years later, I'm no, going to make I don't a turn. Think so. It's going to happen. <laughs> right, Minnie? Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we hope you learned a lot this week about 
wiring your own system um, or even just thinking about getting a system if you have questions or comments about anything that we uh, that we did that you didn't understand or you think hey you could do this different we would love to hear it make a yes. comment on um, on this video and if you are not a subscriber you should be you should yes. subscribe because that's what the cool people do this wasn't a particularly entertaining episode I don't think it wasn't necessarily but funny you said you didn't want any fire and but right that would have been more entertaining and fun escapades normally we're a little funnier at least we think we're funny i think so many things are funny all right so we're, come back we're, we're gonna close <laughs> out here thank you guys for being with us uh make sure to subscribe hit that button and we're gonna say i guess not good night it's good afternoon good That's afternoon funny. good afternoon just watch me Yeah.